few examples. Let's do 3 to the negative 2. If I want to change 3 to the negative 2 into a positive exponent, what do I have to write? Okay, good. So I'm changing, this is like a denominator, or this is like a numerator right now, like 3 to the negative 2 over 1. So if I'm going to make this into a fraction where this is a positive exponent, I'm going to move this from the top, our numerator, to our denominator. So that would be 3 to the, is it still going to be negative 2? No, positive 2, okay. Did it change the sign of my number? No. Nope. <coughs> it's just my exponent. But what's going to be on the top of my fraction? One. one. <coughs> By this rule, move it to the bottom of the fraction, change the sign of your exponent. How about that? How about 9 to the negative 1 half? 9 to the negative 1 half. Can we write that as a positive exponent. Firstly, what's going to be on the numerator of our fraction here, ladies and gentlemen? One. Good. Are you guys all still with me on this? Why do we have a one there? What's on the denominator of our fraction? Do we still have the nine? Yeah, square root. Okay, we're going to have a positive one half. We're going to change the exponent to a positive. Can you deal with nine to the one half? What's nine to the one half mean? Okay, so yeah, the one's going to be there. We're good at this, right? Mm -hmm. This says what type of root? Square. Of 9 to the? First. What is a square root of 9 to the first? Mm -hmm. Three. Three. You can change it to a square root if you want to, or if you're getting good at this, just go right to the The same thing as 1 third. Because this right here is the square root of 9 to the first. Let's do a few more examples and we'll call it a day. Okay, 27 to the negative 2 thirds. First thing we're going to do is make that exponent into a positive. I want you to do that right now on your paper. Make the exponent into a positive, write what you need to do. We should get a fraction somehow. What's on the top of our fraction, folks? Good. What's on the bottom of our fraction, please? Good. All right. Did you make it that far? Now once we've done that, we have the positive exponent, now we can use what we just learned and simplify the thing. You can't really simplify here. It doesn't really work. We don't know how to deal with an, a negative version of a root. What that means is, okay, just move it to the denominator of a fraction. That's really what it means. So here, can you simplify 27 to the 2 thirds? What type of root do you have? Um, cube. cube root. What type of power do you have? Seven. So what this means is 1 over a cube root of 27 squared. We've already done that. That's what we just learned. So you could square the 27 first, or you could cube root the 27 and then square. I'm going to choose to do that way. Can you think of, think of on your own, what that, don't say it out loud, just think of on your own what that's going to be. What do you think it's going to be? Three cubed. How much? One nine. Nine. Yeah, it's going to be the cube root of 27 is 3. Then you square it, you get a 9. I should have you still okay with that. So we're going to get 1 9. It's kind of interesting that this whole ugly thing is actually equal to 1 9, isn't it? Kind of weird. Much easier to write 1 9. Why don't we just do that? Hmm? Make it that complicated. It is, right? It's complicated. Uh, the problem is you get this a lot. You get this type of stuff a lot in math. We have to know how to simplify it. All right, let's do... Do one more. Yes, let's. <laughs> Here's what I need you to know. I'm going to show you this example for one really good reason. What am I trying to change? Am I trying to change the first negative or the second negative? Will I ever be able to change the first negative? No. Not by moving it. 
So when you do this, you go, okay, yeah, I have one or negative one. I don't really care what you put there. But on the denominator, I have to have I have to have that negative somewhere. I'm going to carry it with this 256. I have negative 256 to the positive 3 fourths. I need you to notice that, yes, the sign of the exponent changed. That's what we're doing. The sign of the number did not change. It doesn't affect the sign of the number. Now, we've already done this problem. In fact, it was on the board. I just erased it. Does this negative go inside of the fourth root that we're going to have or outside the fourth root? Outside. So we're going to have 1 over negative fourth root of 256 to the third. We've, we've actually already done this problem. The fourth root of 256, do you remember what it was? Wait, the fourth root of 256? Four. 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 And then we take the cube of that, we get 64. So this is 1 over negative 64. Or it doesn't really matter where you put that negative. You could have negative 1 over 64 or negative 164. That's the idea. If I did give you something like this, negative 64 to the two thir negative 2 thirds, would you be able to do it? Let's talk about it for a second. First thing you do is write this as 1 over what? 1 over 64. <coughs> would it still be negative? Yep. Yeah. Is this negative ever going to change? Yeah. Is this negative going to be inside the cube root that you're going to write eventually? Yes. Okay, it would be inside. How many will feel pretty good about what we talked about so far? Good. So last time we learned that every single root that we have, second root, or square root, cube root, fourth root, everything about those can be written as rational or fractional exponents. We're going to learn today that those fractional or rational exponents can be used just like regular exponents we've been dealing with since your pre-algebra classes. So we'll refresh your memory on some rules. Your exponent rules, and we'll apply them to those rational exponents. First one. If I give you some, and we're going to use general terms here, not actual specific numbers. We'll deal with those later. I just want to refresh memory on the actual rules here. If I give you some common bases that are multiplied together, such as x squared times x to the fourth power, well, if I have a to the m and a to the nth power, we're multiplying those things. What do I do with the exponents? Do I add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them? We add them. Yeah, that's right. So if I have a to the m times a to the n, we know that's a to the m plus n. I just add those exponents. This, is, this should be a little bit of a review for us. Second one, if I have, and you know what, maybe I'll do an example over here. x squared times x to the third is, well, x to the fifth. We just add those exponents together. If we have an expression that has an exponent in it being raised to another exponent, such as a to the n power, and then we take all of that to the n power, do we still add those exponents together? No. No, we, we do multiply. That's right. Because what this says is I have a to the m times a to the m times a to the m times a to the m, times a to the m n times and every one of those, we would add those those n's together. So that's repeated addition. That means multiplication. So here we'd have a to the m times n. For instance, if we had y to the fourth to the third, that's going to give us y to the twelfth. This is kind of an important one for us. It's going to work a lot. Well, for us, it's going to happen a lot this situation, if I have a times b and I raise all of that to some power, raise all of that to some power, what you need to know is that across multiplication, we can, it's not like you're distributing, you're not actually multiplying these things, but you're raising every single factor in there to that exponent. So if I have a times b all to the m power, then I know this is equivalent to a to the m times b to the m. For instance, if I have y, sorry, let's make it x, y. If I have x, y to the third, that means I'm going to have x to the third times y to the third. It goes to both of them. Hey, by the way, is this true for addition? For instance, if I do a plus b to the n, 
Is that the same as a to the n plus b to the n? Is yeah. that okay? Mm -hmm. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's make it even even easier. How much is this? Five by five. Five squared? How much is this? Four. How much is this? Yeah. Is it the same? Oh no. Does this work? No. Does this work? No. Never do that. Never do that. Okay? You can't distribute, or if you want to say distribute, you can't take an exponent across addition. It doesn't work. I just proved it to you, right? There's one example that does not work. So this does not work. So are you ever going to do this? No. 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 Can you do this? Yes. Yeah. It's a different story, okay? So when you have this product in here, that's fine. Both those factors get raised to the same exponent. However, if I have any addition or subtraction, and I, I have that, that term, or those two terms being added together, and I raise that to an exponent, you can't just break that down. Right? For, for instance, right here, we have a, the 2 plus 3 squared. There's no way this equals 2 squared plus 3 squared. This is 25. This is only 13. There's, there's no way that they're the same. Not sure if you're okay on that one. All right, so make sure you have that down. I'm going to erase this just so we're, we're sticking with our rules. But if you want to write that down, this is just one instance where you cannot, you cannot do that. So that's just like the FOIL method, though, right? If it was just a plus b plus a and a plus b, if it was a square. If that was a square, sure. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. If that was the fourth power. Then it would be four times. Yeah, okay. that would be messy, right? I mean, you, don't want to, you don't want to do no, that, okay. but you could. You, could. <laughs> you just can't do that. Okay, back to our rules here. If I have some fraction to an exponent, what we need to know is that just like here where we had the product and you have your product raised to the n power, if I have a fraction raised to the n power, both the numerator and the denominator get raised to that power as well. We've talked about that before in this class, so we're just going to write a to the m over b to the m. It just goes to both the numerator and denominator. Very, very similar to this one is just you're dealing with a quotient instead of a product. <coughs> if I have a quotient where I have the common base there, of A, I have A to the n power over A to the n power, if I multiply common bases and got to add exponents, when I divide common bases, what am I going to do to those exponents? Yeah. Yeah, multiplication means you're going to add those exponents. Division means you're going to subtract those exponents. And we do it like this. We do the a to the m power minus n power. m minus n. The top, one, the top power minus the bottom power. Well, I guess I could give you some, some examples here, huh? So for this one, if I did... 3 over x to the second, that would be the same thing as 3 to the second over x to the second, or 9 over x squared. If we wanted to do common bases, we'd do something like y to the second over y to the fifth. If I did y to the second over y to the fifth, we have common bases, we have y to the second, y to the fifth. What we do here is we'd say, this is the same thing as y to the, what comes first, 5 or the 2, if I'm going to subtract? The 2. The 2. It makes a difference, doesn't it? The 2 would have to come first. It comes on the, on the numerator there. 2 minus 5. What's our answer going to be? Y to the negative 3. Okay.